Hey guys, it's Kelsey. Welcome to my layout share for How to Kill a Kit with Style May. So I got 13 layouts out of this kit this month and I think this is the most I've ever had left over at the end of a How to Kill a Kit with Style. I usually do a pretty good job of getting almost everything used up. Um, I'm not upset about that though because I love this collection and I'm, I'm glad I have a little bit left over to play with. So I'm gonna go over what I made first and then uh, we'll go over what's left over. So this was the first one that I made. I got these puppy wolves on here. I loved them. I just wanted to do something with simple layers. I didn't want to cover up too much of the background because it is one of those very realistic scenic backgrounds. Um, I got all three of these acetate pieces stapled on here. I thought those looked really good used all three together. Um, and then some of the uh, thickers. So that's where I started. Some of the puffy hearts, some of the silver stars. So a pretty simple one to start off with. Um, this was a sketch one. Most of these layouts were for the Secret Not Secret Kit Club, either for International Scrapbooking Day Challenges or for their um, party. So uh, if you're on there, you've probably seen a lot of these. All of these have process videos, so if there's any one of them you like and want to see created, they're all up on my channel. Um, this one I used one of those cool rub-on sticker combos, and then I got a few more of the uh, embossed puppy stickers on here. Also pulled in some of the bears. I thought this looks super cute. I love this puppy sticker here. It says stand tall, and I put it next to the bear standing up. Um, I also started using some of the sequins. Um, I, I don't use sequins all that often. I love how they look. I just have a hard time using them myself. Uh, so I thought I'd just dip my toe in and just try and use them as I would enamel dots. And I like how that looks, that little bit of shimmer in those areas. Um, but yes, this is page two. And then page three, I kind of went back to the same layery style as that first one, but just wanted to do more. <laughs> so I got the uh, navy sky colored photo corners, the vellum wolf. I definitely love pulling in all of the animals. So I kind of have bears on this one, so I have wolves on this one. I popped up my little sticker on some foam. And again, I used some thickers. Um, I did pull in this border punch a lot. I'll show you that when I go over what's left over. There's a few things I pulled in a lot uh, while using this kit. So I just want to show you what those were when I go over what products I have left over. Um, but yeah, I really like how this one turned out too. So <laughs> there is three. Number four, this one was super simple, but I really like how it turned out. One, because I just love this cut file that Christina sent with the kit. I think it goes so perfect. Um, and I really like how this six by six paper looks behind it. Um, again, just playing with the sequins. I really like when people do the sequins scatter where they kind of look random, but I cannot do that in a way that looks good to me. Like other people, it looks fine. And then I try and do it and it's a mess. So I tried to just do this scatter of sequins where they're more condensed by the cut file and they kind of scatter out. So I like how that ended up looking. Um, then I pulled in some of this awesome fringe that Christina sent with the kit. I think this fringe is so cool. <laughs> so yes, um, I was really happy to get all three of those kind of special things she sent with the kit on a page. So <laughs> there's that one. Um, then number five, I love this one too because look I made a shaker pocket. This is my favorite way to use sequins when I do have them is to make a shaker pocket and I just think oh, I just think that's so cool and the sequins just go so perfect with this kit so I thought this was the best way to really show them off. Um, but I did do some silver mixed media here. This one um, was my page that I did a real-time scrapbook process video for. So if you like watching the real-time process videos that aren't super sped up and kind of see what I'm thinking as I'm thinking it, that's up on my channel as well. Um, I like pulling in some of the silver details with the, um, the texture paste, the rub-on, and then some of these vellum pieces that had silver. Uh, at this point, I had realized that the back of this puffy sticker pack had pictures of all of the puffy stickers. So I went in and cut all of them out, fussy cut them. <laughs> so this is a piece of the packaging from um, the puffy stickers packaging. So I used this actual wolf that came in the kit on that first page and then I fussy cut this from the back of the packaging and used it again. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, and then we have layout five. This was a sketch one as well. I think this was a paper issues scrap lift. Um, so I really like the basic design that they created with it. 
Um, I definitely wanted to show this stripe off a few times, so I'm glad I got to use it in different pieces as opposed to a whole background. I really wanted to use it as a whole background, but using it as a strip gave me this piece twice to use on two separate pages, so you'll see that. Um, but I just did some simple layering around the photo, and then I got a bunch of the trees in the collection used up, this big little bunny. I thought this puppy sticker absolutely matched this photo perfectly. Look how those colors line up in my photo. I think that is so cool how perfect that matches. Um, and then down here just pulled in some staples and then those thickers as well. I didn't use the thickers near as much as I thought I did because so much of this collection has really good sentiments on it. A lot of the times I would just use a rub on or a die cut as my title. Um, so you'll see there are quite a few more thickers left over than there usually is. <laughs> um, but I did do some mixed media with some acrylic paint and texture paste, so I'll show you um, what I used after that. Again, I used that zigzag border punch. Um, so there's that layout. This one again was pretty simple. Um, I laid my photos out in a strip and I pretty much just embellished along the diagonal. I didn't do too much photo layering here. Um, I basically just mimicked whatever I added here, I added down here. So I have the sticker, I have the moon, I have the stars, the rub on, the enamel shapes. So that's kind of where I started with this one. It's pretty simple, but I like that it's a nice, easy flow. I like that there was so much of the sky showing just because this is going into night one of our camping trip. And I want it to feel like there's a big open sky because there was. We were out in the middle of the woods and the sky was awesome. So <laughs> there's that. I have my journaling. I got this wolf up here. Um, these enamel shapes didn't come in the kit. They were from Seven Paper, but I just wanted a little something extra to add on here. Um, so that's what I did. And then this one I was really excited about. So I used the rest of the sequins on this page. I had this awesome cut file I got from Christina on International Scrapbooking Day. Um, and so I thought it was going to go perfect because there's wolves and other woodland creatures in this collection. So I thought a fox would fit in really, really well. Um, so I just basically took three different pattern papers and then left some open windows and then I made little shaker pockets in the extra windows. And I just think those sequins in those windows, I think that is so cool. So I really like how this one turned out too. Again, I just did kind of simple layers. Uh, this one was all about the cut file. I said that like a thousand times in the process video. I just am so stoked about this fox. I didn't want to overcomplicate the rest of it too much. Um, so I did simple layers here and then I just wanted to mimic all the patterns that are in this cut file up here So I still had this journaling piece with the wood grain So I just pulled in a little bit of the constellation and wolf pattern that was also down here And then I used the entire row of puffy paw prints <laughs> On this page because I thought that was a really cute detail and it didn't overwhelm any of the other stuff um, So there's that one and then here's that other chunk of that stripe that you saw on that last one so I just used this as a central portion. This again was a sketch, I believe, for the uh, Scraptacular Cropping Club. And then it was a challenge, um, the double vision challenge for the Secret Not Secret Kit Club. So again, this is another one that I was just kind of mirroring what I did on one side on the other. So <laughs> you'll see there's basically two of everything on opposite corners of the page. So I really like how that one turned out. I really wanted to make sure I used some of these acrylic pieces on white just so they could really show up. Um, <laughs> especially the moon pieces, if they're not on white, they're really hard to see. Um, and then I pulled in some Heidi Swap enamel shapes in their teal color, which goes really, really well with this collection. So I was really happy about that. These little silver metal stars were from um, a crepe paper collection, one of their boy collections. So those weren't part of it, but everything else pretty much is. Uh, so there's that page. And then this one I had a lot of fun with. This was a monochromatic challenge to bring in a pop of another color. So of course I did blue with pops of silver and this one was a really fun process for me to go through. So I pulled in a lot of uh, blue scraps and then just like dug through my stash and anything silver I pulled and I tried to incorporate it on this page. So I got another rub on, some staples, um, some scraps of acrylics, some silver bows, a doily, some more texture paste, um, glitter paper, which I hadn't used in a minute. And then I got another one of those uh, puffy embossed um, stickers and actual little puffy circles. So I thought this one turned out really cute too. That one was a lot of fun to make as well. Uh, so there's that one. This one was um, 
a challenge to use the, uh, I use the army badge for Memorial Day to kind of inspire this page. So I got the actual badges on here. I told you guys in my kit share, I was gonna try to incorporate these. I thought it would be difficult because they're not exactly the colors of the collection. Uh, but I think this one turned out all right, especially using that with my inspiration because I was using the actual army badge as my inspiration. So I thought it was appropriate to get my badges on this page. Um, it also inspired me to use the eagle sticker in this banner just because those were also uh, icons in the army badge and then all the colors. Even this background paper to me reads as camo a little bit. So I thought that was really appropriate. And then all of the colors of the army badge are in here. So I really like that. Again, this is another one of the packaging wolves from the puppy sticker sheet that I fussy cut to use again. Um, this is a die cut wolf and again I use that zigzag border punch quite a lot. <laughs> so there is this one. This one used a lot of scraps. I had a lot of fun with this one. The circle piece is a circle from the rub on kit. I got all the puppy hearts that were left on here and some branding strips from the 6x6 six six paper pad. So that was a lot of fun. Um, this one was an exclusive sketch for the Secret Not Secret Kit Club. So you guys wouldn't have seen the sketch unless you're in uh, that group, but they did give me permission to show the process video on the page. So this one, I really like how clean it looked. The past two were really, really layery. There was a lot going on, which I enjoyed, but I really like this change of pace, doing something cleaner. Um, <laughs> I got some hand stitching on here, those acetate paw prints. Um, and a few other elements. These moon were actually from the six by six pattern paper of this one that I punched out. Um, so I liked using those as embellishments. And then I got all the rest of the star stickers from the flat sheet on here. So I really like how this one turned out too. And I made my own tag because I finally have a hole puncher. It only took me forever years, but I actually have my hole puncher so I can make my own tags now. <laughs> and then I stole the reinforcer from another tag. So I didn't make that, but you know. Um, so there's this one. And then final page. This one is a scrap lift of Miranda's page that she did for the Mercy Tiara Spring Hop. Um, so this one will be over there. Uh, but I really, really liked what she did with her page. She had a lot of fun, bright colors, a ton of embellishment tucked in everywhere, which was super, super cute. And I wanted to <laughs> mimic, um, but being this was the last page I made with this kit, I didn't have a whole lot left to work with that would have worked, but I loved the way she layered the papers, the distressing. So I really like held on to that and used her basic design and the paper layers as my inspiration. Um, so yeah, so I got a lot of scraps on here, a lot more, um, flat stickers. This was a flat sticker, my journaling piece. Again, I pulled in those Heidi Swap Teal enamel shapes that didn't come in the kit, but work really well. And again, I used some more thickers because I have quite a few thickers left over. So I wanted to get one more title using the thickers on here. Um, so yeah, those are my 13 pages from this kit. I love all of them because it's Wolfpack and I had so much fun this month playing with this. So I'm going to set these aside and show you what I have left. Um, still definitely have enough to make more mini pretty things with. So <laughs> I'm excited that it's not over. <laughs> Out of the 12 by 12s, I have this chunk of wolf. I got it on two pages, but I was trying to use it in pieces just because I didn't need a whole lot of the showing for you to get the idea and the impact of this paper. The back was just the gray, so I really wanted to focus on the wolves. But I still have a pretty good chunk of this one. Um, I have that chunk of the wood grain that I gutted from that very last page. This was the last 12 by 12 I had left. So I just gutted that middle section. So I still have that. I have this piece I gutted from that army inspired page from behind all of those layers. I have this gutted from that second stripe paper. I had those two photos and then that diagonal. So I still gutted what was behind there because I love this stripe. I love this constellation, so I wanted to save any of that I could for a future page. And then I had a few from this cut apart sheet that was this um, check pattern. I had a few pieces that I gutted. So still an, a pretty enough, like a good amount of big chunks to be able to do a few more pages with bigger layers. Um, it really, really helped having that six by six paper pad to really do a lot of the small layering bits with. So I could save the 12 by 12 for backgrounds and paint in like layers that had to be larger. Um, so yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Out of the six by six, there were 36 sheets. I think I had 13 left. 
I gutted everything. So I have a ton that would have been used, but that I gutted. So these are all the pieces I have. Like I have a good bit of the six by six paper pad because even though I was using it for a lot of layering bits, there was still a lot. Oh, this was a piece from the 12 by 12 that I gutted. So is this that Misty Mountain? Um, but there's still, just cause I, I was trying to save everything, you guys. If you saw any of the process videos, you know. <laughs> But yeah, so still a good bit to work with. I could definitely do some paper piece backgrounds, a much more like layering backgrounds, cut file backgrounds. So I still have a good bit to work with. This is weird being at the end of the How to Kill a Kit with Style with this much left. Um, even this, I was thinking I could try to piece together to have a vertical strip going down a page with layers. So I was kind of saving these two to use together like that. Um, but still, like, I have a decent amount left to work with still. So I'm excited that I still can play. I'm not done done. <laughs> Let's see, out of my puppy stickers, I think I used about half of them. I used all the paw prints, all the hearts, all the stars. Um, yeah, so I, I used a good bit. I'm surprised I have this much left because I love all of these. So I will definitely continue to use these as I use this kit. Uh, the flat sticker sheet, there were 53 pieces on here. I think I did a pretty good job of using all of them. I still have four little journal pieces. Um, and then there's a few like moons and feathers over here. So again, they will get used up whenever I continue to do more <laughs> pages with this. Um, Rub-ons, I'm really surprised I have as much left as I did because I thought I reached for this a lot and I have a surprising amount left. So I still have four of the white rub-ons. Um, I still have six of the silver. And then out of the stickers, I still have a good bit. You guys saw me use these rub-ons a lot right on the background because they really held up to popping on those darker, more solid colored papers. I really liked how that looked. I did use some of them over the companion sticker pieces. Uh, but I like how it looked both ways. And then you'll see I also use some of these pieces just as layering bits and not with the rub-ons. So I'll, use, I'll continue to use both of these either way. Like if I run out of these before the rub-ons, I'll use the rub-ons on the paper. Same as if I have these left over. They're really good little layering bits. I could see a little banner here, a little heart, enamel dots just being a little cluster. And I think that would be super cute. Um, so they'll get used. <laughs> Everything will get used with this collection, I promise. <laughs> Out of the puppy stickers, I have two left. I told you guys I was gonna have a hard time with this one just because we were at Cloudland Canyon, um, which is a national canyon forest. Um, so I, I couldn't really use this that said we were somewhere else. That would have been confusing. So I kind of knew I wasn't gonna be able to use this one. Um, so I still have that one. I still have this one, the pack's got my back. Um, again, I probably could have used this at some point, but it really read more as a family piece or a friend group piece. So I think maybe if I use this collection for a Bennett page with him and his family, that would be really cute. Um, so yeah, still have those two left over. Um, out of the ephemera, I still have this vellum frame. I love this. I can't believe I didn't get it on a page. I was kind of hoarding it a little bit. Uh, my problem was I want to use it on white background so you can really see all the colors when this goes over a darker background. It's really hard to really be able to see how how pretty the frame is. <laughs> so I will use this too. Um, but again, didn't get it on there. I still had a few acetate pieces. The unplug I thought would have been perfect for this collection because we were out in nature away from everything else, but that didn't make it on there. Part of it is because both of these pieces, I love them both, but them being on acetate, they really needed to be on a light colored, not busy background. Um, I just didn't have that opportunity on a page that I would have wanted to use them. <laughs> have this little vellum be true to you. I have my wood grain photo corners. Those will still get used up. <laughs> I tried to use them a few times. Um, but I just wanted to save them for a page that they made sense because it felt like I was sticking them on there to get them used up and not because they were meant to be on the page. So they'll get used up too. I still have this go see do. I still don't know why I have two C's. That may have been an accident. <laughs> um, I have the acetate explore with silver, this little acetate this place arrow. Um, I have 
It's a little acetate star. I'm surprised that didn't get used up. That shocks me. <laughs> and then I have three vellum and four acetate stars. So I'm surprised this didn't get used up either. But there are a ton, a ton, a ton of stars that come in this collection. So they were being used. I just didn't use all of them because there were a ton. Um, so yeah, there's that. What's left? I have thickers. There's quite a bit of thickers left still because, as I mentioned, I used a lot of the sentiments um, to do my titles. I mean, I used a decent amount, I feel like, uh, but there's still a good amount left to do more titles. So I did numbers on, I think, one of the pages. So there's still a good bit of numbers, but um, not too bad. I didn't use as much as I thought I would, but they will continue to get used. So this will go here. And then I did want to mention, um, if you saw the, all the process videos, you'll have known, but on the back of the puffy stickers and the rub-ons, there's pictures of everything. So I went in and I fussy cut. <laughs> I just now saw the rub-ons. Look at that. There's little mini rub-on die cut versions. So I fussy cut them and used a circle punch to cut these out. So I still have more embellishments that I literally just now found that will go on with future pages. But um, I didn't see the point of throwing away the packaging when there's perfectly good pieces on there. So I have a little bit more to use as I go forward. <laughs> So yes, have that still. And then I did just want to show you a few of the things I pulled in a lot with because I got questions. Um, this zigzag punch is a Martha Stewart punch. It's a zigzag that punches holes and it embosses. So that is super, super cool. I got this for a dollar at a garage sale, but I'm sure you could find it if you Googled Martha Stewart zigzag embossing punch or something like that so i pulled this in a ton i mentioned in one of the process videos that it really reminded me of mountains with it being zigzag so i just thought it fit the vibe really really well um i also pulled in some silver acrylic paint a few times this is just regular cheap silver paint it's apple barrel brand pure silver color um so i pulled that in a few times and then my uh, texture paste. I just did Artsy Silver. This came in a pack of three. Uh, I can't remember if I got them at Michael's or Tuesday mornings, but it came with white, black, and silver um, in a pack of three. So if you were looking for this, it's just Artsy brand. I tried to Google it. I couldn't find it. Artsy has other silvers that I did find, but it's not, I don't know if it's the same as this or not. Um, but this is the silver texture paste I used throughout the month. Um, I really enjoyed using that because I hadn't used any of that yet. I didn't think I'd ever use silver, so I'm glad I did. Um, and then the last thing was my Stampin' Up! pen that I wrote with throughout this month. This blue matched really, really well. Um, so I just wanted to share the color was Night of Navy, if anybody was looking for that. But that was what's left over. So again, I, I have a decent amount left compared to what I usually have left at this point. Um, so I'm kind of like, oh, I didn't do as good as normal. But another part of me is like, yay, I have more to use. <laughs> so I also have branding strips too. There's only one 12 by 12 branding strip left. It's the big moons. And then these are all scraps and um, pieces from the six by six. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is what's left over. So I had a lot of fun this month. You guys know I'm obsessed with Wolfpack. So um, you'll see more of it with this at some point. <laughs> but thanks for watching. Make sure you check out everyone else's layout share. I'll be back tomorrow with my How to Kill a Kit with Style June. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys later. Bye.